Hey beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. My name is Abele and I'm Chiku and because there's so much to learn from today's video, let's jump straight to it. Ensure you start every makeup look on a clean face. The longevity of your makeup will depend largely on this. So you want to cleanse like I'm doing now. Afterwards you tone and then you moisturize. Using damp cotton pads, simply take off all the cleansing lotion you put there. Saturate your cotton pads in, in the case of toning as you will see now exactly so you tone afterwards you let it air dry or use a ply or two of boxed tissue take out the excess or like i said let it air dry and of course you go ahead and moisturize when you're done with this one can easily say the face is ready for makeup you can add other steps but if you get ctm right you're good to go so come with me and let us transform her okay so i like to do this just to dry up the brows. We'll start off with brushing up the brows. She already has great brows, well groomed, which is good. In fact, your brows are in line already. There's not much that needs to be done. We just need to follow what we already have there. So, but even if the person has nothing in terms of brows, all you need to do is follow what one would call the natural path for brows. At the beginning, not much work is needed here. But if you had no brows, the motion for the beginning part of eyebrows is what we call short hair-like strokes. So they'll be short, they'll be hair-like, and then you must use a light hand. So if you go with a heavy hand, you'll get the wrong effect so in your own case we don't need so much in terms of feeling so you just brush it out to even out the whatever product you might have there to just make it really natural as it has become so and even without sculpting or cleaning it already looks great so we simply replicate what we've done here on this side and then we clean out lovely Again, remember, you remember what we use for here? What, what do we use? Short brows. Short brows. Hair like strokes. strokes, nice. So the strokes of the hair like, and then we short with a light hand. I usually like to mix, so I'll use, I'll mix Fawn, and I'll mix Zaron. So these are concealers, and I'm using this in the shade, let me see, Nubian. The fun, the lighter shade is something I would ordinarily use all over your eyelid and in the middle of your brows, particularly around, around your brow bone, but you see the mixture. So I'm just going to use this tiny bit, this area around the brow bone, and then this part at the beginning, like where you have this area and towards the end. So as much as I'll still go to the beginning, but you notice that the placement, I moved out a bit from the beginning of the brows. In fact, sometimes I actually start from the middle so that you're sure that at the end of the day, what you get is a sharp arrangement. Close your eyes, please. So, I just put it. In makeup, it's better you take a little and build on it rather than go with so much product and start fighting to take out the excess. So, I'll simply blend it out and do it on the other side. Now, the blending motion is not rubbing. You are not rubbing. Do not rub. So you're dabbing, you are dabbing. That is the blending motion. So even if you use primer, like the full primer, whether whatever color, you don't want to, you don't want to rub like this, for example. You can get away with it here, but not on the brows. So on the brows, you want to come as, on the lid, you want to come as close as possible 
to the brows but do not rub so once this is done you would ask whoever your dream makeup for be it yourself or be it for a client or a family member just tell them please do not open your eyes so that you set it the moment you set it they can open their eyes for as long as they want and you never worry about creasing so she remained that way while I set it. So in setting, setting simply means take some translucent powder over it. If you like, you use some loose powder like regular brown loose powder. So I like to use a translucent powder because that way it retains the same color that I want. But of course, if you want to do some form of nude, no, nude is not a word, gold brown themed makeup, you find that you might also decide to use a loose powder. Even a compact powder, you just make it loose and you're fine. All right, so this is, at this point, if she opens her eyes, you've got nothing to worry about. So now I have set it. When I work my eyeshadow on it, everyone is fine. If she opens her eyes at this point, everyone is also fine. So we'll simply replicate it on the other side. Okay, so I'm going back with what we used for the combination I used. There's Nubian, Zara, and that's what I'm using just to clean the top. So for the top, what you simply need to do is ensure that the shade is as close as possible to the brow, to the skin of your client or your skin. I mean, if you're doing your so let it be as close as possible or exactly the same shade. Just make it sharp and clean. If you need to, you go the other way. Just at the end of the day, we don't want that Lekki Ajay Expressway thing where you have one sharp line here and another sharp line there. There's nothing natural about it. So you find that that happens to people. I've shared it in one of my videos. That happens when you use the wrong shade above, especially a lighter shade. But if it's the proper shade, it would simply blend in. As so, it would simply blend in. So we do it the other way. And of course, if the client says, oh, I want thinner brows, I want wider brows, you can also create it here. Okay, otherwise you move on to the other side, which is exactly what we're going to do. And again, you don't want too much harshness here. So you see, we've created that beginning. Her brows, her natural brows were like a block shape. So you have a little bit of beginning. By the time we do the rest of the makeup, you have this projecting a little. The calculation usually is you find where the nostril divides this point. So when you do the math, that's where you want it to always be. So you have that bit, you have this bit. So when we clean up, you find that everything aligns. Okay, so let's take it the other side. This is um, Masquerade Mini by Juvia's. So I'll use this shade and this is Ben. So this is what I'll use for her transition color. I'll use it on both eyes. Transition color. It will sit well with her skin tone. So we're going for a subtle but glamorous look those who know me would know that this juvia's palette is one of my favorites so we're going for a subtle look which you can jazz up to an evening look with something like a little bit of glitters for example and when i do when i do eyeshadow i like to go to both eyes at the same time just so that you don't miss any step or think you did one thing on one part and you didn't so i like to go both ways at the same time so it's light if i like i can take it up a notch by adding some more of that shade but i won't so i'll just leave it that way so that's the transition color and the motion is windshield motion windshield for the transition windshield is fine so if you're going to use the transition as any part of the lid then of course the motion will change but in this case the windshield motion is fine so I'm going in with Zaron F, the F palette, and I'll 
go with if i like i could just start with this you know start with sahara then go to mocha but because it's a straightforward look i'll simply go to mocha and again if it's for you you also don't want to waste so much time you also don't want to waste so much time so i'm going straight to mocha so you close your eyes just drop it there you know and try to bring it in not too much bring it in so emphasis on this portion and like i said i like to do both eyes at once so i just drop it here a little bit and notice i've not gone to the outer v this is where we call the outer v this portion so i'm not here yet if i like i can go there but for the purposes of blending i'm making it really come out clean i'm making the movement from one eyeshadow into the next really seamless I just like to take things one step at a time. Okay, close your eyes. And like I always say in makeup, it is easier, it's better, it's more advisable to build up on the makeup application. It's harder to go in with so much than start struggling to undo what you've done, talking about a mistake. So in this case, I'm going in a circular motion, light hand, again, it's not hard. It look, even if it, it looks really fast and hard, it's not, trust me. So light, and then I come in a little bit with that motion, if you like, otherwise you go with the windshield motion here so that things begin to look um, like a homogeneous mix. Okay, so you do same here, just a little bit. Notice that the outer V is still sort of there. But if it goes into that portion, still well, all well and good. So. You do a little bit because you want to disperse that eyeshadow. So this brush has no product on it. It's a clean, fluffy brush. So use a clean, fluffy brush for this blending. Okay. So it, luckily, this is an old brush. I've, this is uh, this brush has two sides to it. So I use one side to pick up the product, as so. Then I use the other side to blend it. So I pick up the product. Now I'm going to the outer V. If you want to make things even, you know, if you want more pigment there, depending on the look, like I told you, this is a subtle, quiet look. Oh, I don't want too much makeup, but I still want to look gl glamorous. This is what we're creating here. So now I've gone to the outer V. This is really the outer V of this look. I'm bringing it just a little bit, but outer V. Again, not too much. So I replicate it on this other side outer v you see so if you like you even you can basically you can literally create a v so you see the v forming there this is the v so this is the outer v again i have a little bit of fit here then you bring it in so it's looking pretty already even without blending but i'm just going to go ahead and blend okay shut your eyes please so let's start from this side so with the outer v done we'll just do that blending motion again and lightly touch here just a little bit by the time i put the lead color the main lead color would we'll bring everything together okay so just a little bit here then you make sure you have a homogeneous homogeneous mix over here so that's it really then we go to the lead if you want to make things more pigmented you can bring some more product here you can bring some more product here otherwise you'll find the way it is for the lead color i'm going in with gold mine gold mine or bear would do the trick close your eyes please so this is me simply going on with the gold mine Again, from that same palette, the Zaron palette, eyeshadow palette. So, and like I also shared in my previous video, I like to take eye product on both the left and the right, the front and the back side of the brush to reduce how much, how many times I have to go back into the product. Okay. So. By the time I exhaust what I have on one side, I simply flip to the other side, which is what I'll do, which is what I have just done, not what I'll do. 
so this already looks like cut crease but it's not cut crease i'm going to blend it out but it is subtle if i wanted a cut crease it would be more defined so what i've done here i will simply do on the other side but i shall not waste your data and time so now don't open your eyes so i quickly show them so this what I'll do here, like I said, I'll replicate it on the other side, is I take the same brush, remember the brush? So this is that blending brush. So I just want to make sure there's no demarcation here, no harsh lines. So I do this slightly. If I like, I can also use the back of this brush to like make sure there's nothing here. And remember, there's no product on this. So I can always go back and do a quick motion here. If it were cut crease, I'll be careful how I do this. In fact, I almost wouldn't do it except I really have to. So you see things are already looking subtle and pretty. I'll replicate on the other side and come back to you. Okay, so I'm just going to use a light shade, a lighter shade of what we have there to highlight the tear duct. Nothing major. Again, we're looking for a light look. If we wanted something really bright, or dramatic we could even take glitters here otherwise you just take a little bit of something any color lighter in this case I'm using the Giza from the first palette where we took the transition color but again for you or for anyone really just something lighter for the tear duct if you like use your trans your bronzer highlighter if you like okay shut your eyes let's see not not too tight so you take it off just a little bit. I don't think it's recording. Just... No, no! So something you can do, you know, so at the end of the day, you see that you have some products here and you don't need them. So you take wipes as so, and simply try to, this would help you with your eyeliner game when it is time. So you can just wipe off a little, or right, or rather wipe off the excess what you have here okay just wipe it off take out the excess and as I always say be careful with your skin you don't want to drag your skin you may get away with it now but when the skin starts getting weaker or when you start getting older uh, you might regret some of these things so be careful when you pull the skin if you can avoid it, all the better. Otherwise, just go easy, especially around the eyes. So we're simply going to put a bit of primer on our face. Truth be told, this should have happened earlier. So we're just going to distribute the primer on her face. A pea-sized amount is fine. You don't need a lot for primer. Like I said, ideally, this should have happened way, I mean, at the beginning, before, after the moisturizer. But the beautiful thing with makeup, especially as a professional, or even just you, then you're home, is you always know how to fix things when they go wrong. So in that case, in this case, we just get the primer as close as possible to all the areas where makeup would go. But ideally, it should have happened before now. All the same, no worries at all. Okay, so primer, well distributed. We shall now go on to the foundation. Okay, so remember to color match, you take a bit of product in your Q-tip and test against the neck. You want to test against the neck. Okay, because the whole idea is you need the foundation to be on the face, not the neck. Most times you find people going all the way to the neck. So when you have your halter neck, your total neck, it gets ruined. So when you do proper color matching, all you need to do is end around here. You have no business coming down here. At the end of the day, you realize that here, both here and the neck would actually be one. They would be an item. So we'll just go on with foundation on her face as so. A lot of people are comfortable with the beauty blender, but if you're more comfortable with the brush, please use a brush only. Or use a brush and go back with the beauty blender okay otherwise you distribute this way but make sure you blend thoroughly 
blending is hard work but it's worth it okay Don't forget to go into the hairline just so that you don't create a mask. Okay, so we put some concealer and blend some more. So I'm going in with the fun, the fun, LA Girl fun in the shade fun. Okay, so once distributed, same thing, you just need to blend. That's all you need to do, just blend as fast as you can. So, I'll try and do this so it doesn't get in the way. If I want to expand her forehead, I'll simply drag this all the way up, or well, not all the way up, but I'll go up some, I'll go up a lot. So it will create the illusion of bigger forehead. And if you want to create the opposite effect, you localize it a lot more. Okay, so I'm just getting this portion of the nose. So the one we need to contour the nose, we can make it look, we can snatch it some more. Okay, okay. just a little bit bend your, try to fold your lips a little, just a little bit. So when we say a little bit, she has great skin, obviously. But for people who have some creases, we always try to discourage them from, look of this, we try to discourage them from making lots of facial expressions. And so whatever is left here is what I'm just going to use and create a little bit of contour here. I don't need to take new product. If I were to take new product, I won't use something as light as this. I'll use a darker shade, but all the same. You can do this and still get away with it. So we'll come back and blend it all even more. So we do the same on this side. For blending, I like to use this Kabuki. Yeah, I like to use this just to blend those edges. Some more. You just take out the excess, the hash line you have here. Nothing wrong in using your beauty blender, of course. Nothing wrong in that. The results are about the same. But again, it's about preference. So you can use this, otherwise you use your beauty blender and you achieve the same thing. So now you see we've blurred out the harshness. I'm using the corner now. We also want to be sure there's nothing left here. We want to be sure there's no hash line here. Just around the edges of all the places we worked. Okay. And your brushes should always be clean. Otherwise, this is one point when the client can even smell that your brushes are dirty. So, hygiene is important. So that when you're done, you don't have people saying, oh, I had a breakout. You know, so good products good processes good hy hygienic processes that's really important okay so we're done with that blending but we're not done with the entire blending now this is a very critical part under the eyes in this case you see i'm using a small brush now i need her to look up and when she looks up when i blend underneath she would have to remain looking up then i set it with powder that way no matter how long she spends look up no matter how long she spends in the course of the day you'll never find that crease that you always find here so sometimes you find makeup some people's you know some makeup application processes or rather some makeup the final look you find that it is good from far but far from good when you come close no good at all okay so remain there don't look down 
if I was sure she wasn't going to tear up, I would do the second eye immediately. But to save her the stress of having to look up much, I'm just saying, okay, now you may look down. I'll blend it all soon. But by doing this, nothing in this world, okay, I might be exaggerating a lot, but yes, the chances of having anything crack that area are highly limited, highly limited, highly slim. Okay, look up. So you can now clean out what's left. So this way, so I'm just going to repeat it on the other side. Again, you have to blend. If you look, look up. So see the difference? See the difference, come closer please. Look up. So see how dry and clean that area is. This is just good to go while you have a lot of creases. If I leave it this way, look up. If I leave it this way and blend, you see all that product in there? You see that product there? It will remain that way the rest of the day and you don't want that. So let's blend exactly what I did on the other side. I'll do it here. I'm just going to use a little bit of translucent powder to set it, you know, just set the entire face. If you want to bake, you go ahead. If you're not, if you don't plan on baking, if you don't plan on, so this is the same translucent powder I used from the beginning. It doesn't leave any color. It just goes up, but this way you've set it. Look up, please. You can just dust off whatever is left there. If you wish to bake, the next step would then be baking. But this is just translucent powder. If you don't wish to bake, you just need to use your own natural powder. You can go ahead with that. So I use that smaller brush just to make sure I got underneath the eyes. So again, you're not worried about anything kicking up because this is translucent powder. It is light, in fact, super light, and it really has nothing on it. It's leaving no color. It would leave no color at all. So this will be a good time to use this translucent color and play around the neck. By play, I mean you want to blend it. Remember, you did not put any makeup on the neck. So now you want to make sure there is no demarcation between the face and the neck. And this is one way to do it. So blend, 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 which is why we say blending is my cardio. It's a lot of work. As easy as it looks, it's a lot of work. I mean, if you're really going to get it right. Okay. So let's do a bit of baking. Fantastic. Benai setting powder in the shade Topaz. And I'm just going to distribute that using this wedge. So look up, please. And just place it there. Don't worry. Most people say, oh my God, it's orange. Don't worry. It's going to disappear. And it, I'm using this shade because she's dark, dark skinned. If you were for a lighter lady, you don't want to use this. And if a true professional, in the absence of everything, if you do this, I can still, you know, you can still work it and, and bring it together. But ideally, you would need, in fact, even the translucent powder that is white can do the trick. Otherwise, you have other options. If you're using top, if you're using benai, there's still banana. Good. Okay, that's a lot, but we'll take it out. So all the areas I highlighted are the areas I'm setting with powder, with, with the setting powder. So this is basically what we call baking. It's not like baking a cake, but I'm sure you know what I mean now. If you like, just be generous with it. Don't overdo it, but I mean, be generous. All right. So, this turn this way. So you want to do this math properly so that by the time your contour work is done, it will be totally snatched. Sometimes now, you don't have to do this, but this is me. Sometimes I like to do it on the lips. For people who have smile lines here and here, it's a good time to apply some of this here so that it just locks it in. Of course, you would have blended it in the first place. Please look that way. So. You just repeat that process, you do the math and keep it here. Okay. By math, I mean most times you find you, you take it somewhere from the middle of the ear. By the time you go in with your shader here, you now, you now see why that calculation was important. 
okay so that even if your face is wide and you want to make it look slimmer those are the things you can work on again if you want to expand the head the, the forehead you can bring this even more and the person has really big forehead you localize it and bring a lot of shader around here that way the forehead looks smaller okay I'm using only powder products at this point I mean if I were doing this for a bride on your big day I would definitely not use only powder products I would have gone in with liquid blush liquid shader you know just so that by the time your bridesmaids or your bridesmaid starts doing that fantastic job under the sun of wiping off your face we don't lose the the makeup so that it's really there it's under not just superficial but really buried underneath but in this case she's just going to look pretty in the office and on instagram beyond that we don't need to do too much so this is just defining the nose you can make it darker if you were doing a photo shoot i would make it dark darker if you were going on the wrong way i would make it darker because light has a way of absorbing all of it in the photo you won't even see it you'll be wondering we had a lot of product here but it's not coming through there's no definition your face looks bland and undefined so but in this case we don't need to do all that all right so we'll do the other sides now okay so i'm just going to use this right here so i'm just putting a little bit here i'm trying to so it's almost like i'm doing a letter three at a point I'll, you'll find me coming this way and coming this way now that i have makeup on her face you can see i've taken this this powder puff because i don't want prints on her face i don't want to have to touch her face with my bare hands we want the makeup to stay in place okay ideally this brush should be longer it's actually a longer brush but unfortunately the connection underneath has disappeared so i'm just going to continue because it is getting the job done but of course i'm being super careful with the hand i'm using i'm not using a very heavy hand and not too light especially around this area you apply a bit of pressure but not too much again notice i'm not doing circular i want it to come this way go this way please i want it to come this way i'm not going in a circular motion when there's need for that you will find out in a bit so i've taken more product and i'm coming here and i'm defining i'm going along her jawline i'm just trying to make that contour really sharp by the time we blend it all you won't even you won't notice it but there will be a lot so again we're trying to mimic what na what's natural with your face okay no plastic surgery here just mimicking your natural look the natural human face has that shadow here so that's exactly what we're replicating because remember after using foundation the face becomes undefined it's just one color it's pale which is also why if you like you can also include some blush when we get to that point i'll let you know Okay, so I'm just going to use MAC, the mineralized powder, in dark the best, and dust off. Oh, my products are almost finished. Please look up. So I'm just dusting off first with a small brush for the area close to her eyes. Just to dust off. So all this powder has to go. Sometimes you find people getting worried. That, oh my God, I'm orange. Just say to them, trust the process, relax. It will all come together soon. So you may look down. So you can just use the brush for all the areas that require, that are close to places where you've done some makeup. Like these tight areas here, yeah, that's, that's the word I'm looking for. Then for the other areas, But let's dust off first and then we blend. And blending would basically mean making sure that there's no demarcation between here and here. That line, we don't want it. This line, we don't want it. And any drama around here, we don't want it. So we blend further. 
and for that I'll use a smaller brush with better control so again I'll make sure there's nothing left here and I simply in makeup the circular motion is often your blending motion like when you want to get to when you want to get a hash line to disappear like this has done you just you simply do that but the under eye we still have work there so we're not in a hurry for all the blending to happen but in this case yes we have no further need for this hash line so you blend in that circular motion so that it becomes a shadow and not a demarcation if it were a liquid product i would be going this way to blend them if this were the liquid product but being powder this motion is just all right so at this point you can see that the line is gone all you have is a shadow we'll come back to the under eye area much later again when you get used to it is remember it won't take this long first we're doing a video you have to realize that so we're trying to get into all the details and then of course if for example you were doing this for yourself you would have been long done and if she had a, an event i would have been long done but again we don't want to skip any part all for you okay so for under the eyes we're just going to replicate what we did above the eyes so remember this was what i used as the transition color so remember whenever you take i have a video on this already so i won't re i won't just repeat when you take a tap off light tapping so i'll just tell her to look up and then we have this underneath the eyes i'm trying to replicate what we did above so we do that there we go the other way tell her to look up and if you're doing it for yourself <laughs> you already know to look up so do that and go back with this shade which is what we took again you're trying to replicate what you did up So, a little bit there. Look up, please. With a light hand, nothing painful, not so serious. So, you see, there's now a link between underneath. Please look up. Nice. Okay. Okay, so I'm using the gel eyeliner by Zaron, and I'll use this applicator for it. So in this case, I'll just lift her brows, her eyelid. The idea is to make sure you come as close as possible. Make it tight. So for the wings, if you notice, we've already created some form of template there so we simply follow it if you do this just to make sure it goes under so once you have that you can see open your eyes a little just uh -huh. we'll come back to the duct area okay so I'm just doing the inside color if you need to blink tell me I'll take out my hand so we give you a little bit of cut eye here going a little oh good <laughs> well you're doing great so we'll repeat it on the other side and if we ever have to go from this eye to this eye you must wipe your applicator just so that you don't have any form of cross infection from one eye to the other yeah Okay, so I'm just going to take a little bit from the bottle. And as I always say, if you ever use it, make sure you wipe it off before you go to the other side, just to prevent any form of infection. Okay, I've done this other side already. So what we just need to do is tell her to look up. You pull this down to expose the waterline and you go as fast as possible so that the person doesn't tear off. Good, nice. So if you want it thicker, if you want it darker, you go one more line. Or if you think it's not as straight as you would want it, or as 
aligned as you want it, you go again, which is what I'm going to do. So I'll put a bit of blush, just a little bit here. You can tell them to smile, but other times there's really no need because we want to add a little bit of color back to the face. So emphasis is here. Again, not with a light, a heavy hand. Then you just take it up a little. Then you take it up here, you take it up here, you take it up. If she were a bride, I would use the liquid, I would use the liquid blush first. I might still come back with this, but liquid blush to make sure it doesn't move. And if I want to diffuse it a little bit or reduce the intensity, I can take a little bit of translucent powder or just run my brush above it. As so. Okay, so for lashes, we'll use the pair from Miss Metrics. So I'll let her choose, then we'll use her lashes, then bronze her face, do her lips, and we're good to go. Okay, so we're just putting the lash glue on this. So when you do this, ensure you go all through the band. Then, very important, make sure you, you get enough on both edges, just so that you don't have that syndrome where lashes just fly out from the eyes. You know what I mean? So allow it to get a bit tacky. Please do not blow. Do not blow it. Don't blow it like with the air from your mouth. That's what I mean. A lot of, I see a lot of people do that but there's nothing hygienic about it. So let it get tacky, and then you go straight to the eyes. Okay, so you can use your fingers like I'm doing, or you use tweezers, whatever is more comfortable for you. So it's a bit tacky now. And I'm simply going there. And soon I'll tell her to open her eyes just so that it doesn't transfer to her lower lid. Okay. Please open. Aha. Uh -huh. We don't want it on the lower lid. Open up. So, we'll let it dry for a bit and we'll take it to the other side. So, to highlight her face, I'm just going to use Bobby Brown for to bronze her face. Yes. Okay. So, just a little bit then. You highlight that area. Just bring some life to the brow bone. Please don't go to the beginning, just the brow bone area. The brow bone area only. If you want to make it more pigmented, if you want to make it pop more, or as some people will say, if you want to blind your enemies, then you go over and over. Again, like my previous video may have shown, or has shown, if you put some liquid or even spray the face with setting spray it would make this more pigmented otherwise it all looks good so a little bit on the forehead if you like a little bit on the chin area if you like and yeah we now take it to the cheekbone so there are different brushes you can use. You see this one is really pigmented. So if you want to go over it again, you may also do that. But at the end of the day, remember to blend and blend, blend thoroughly. If you add a bit of setting spray to this or even water, it would get, it would become even more pigmented. Okay, so we blend and then you do your lips and you're all good to go. So now that you're done with that, you can just go over it with a little bit of powder just to blend it. And if you like, no need to use powder. Again, you're just, again, you're just trying to blend it. We don't want harsh lines anywhere. And for this side, you can use the same brush you use, the same little brush. So this is optional, but if you like, you can set the brows. So I'll just set her brows to make sure they stay in place.
Okay, so we're onto the lips now, and I just used a lip pencil or a lip pen on her lips. So I'm just going to blend it before we go with the. So this is like to give it the outline. So I've outlined it and I'm blending it now. If you want to make the lips appear bigger, this is a good time to outline it. And if you want it smaller, it's also about what you do with the lip product. Okay, so we're going with the lipstick now. Okay, so for her lips, I'm using teas, Zaron in teas. Then I'll go over it with Zaron in 24 karat. Yeah, so whatever works for you. If you want it red, whatever color you want, just go on at this point. Again, for hygiene purposes, I, you'll never find me using the wand on on the lips of the client. Oh my goodness, I just did. <laughs> so you'd always find that I use the lip brush. It's more hygienic. So. So I'm done with her lips. I'm just going to clean out the sides. The same color foundation you used is fine. I just want to make sure it's sharp. So to set it, you're simply putting a little bit of powder along that area. That's what's setting it and tails. Just a little bit. So we're really done, we'll just spray our face. Don't open your eyes. So this will help the foundation sit. And while we do this, I often tell people, don't open, I often tell people do not make any facial expression, like your forehead area, you know, here, or around your, don't try to smile, just so that you don't lock foundation into that face. So I'll bring the fan. Nice. So we use the fan to... Right. So the moment is dry, she's good to go. Lovely. Okay, without expression, you can open your eyes. You can look that way. 